Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. I'm Matt Watson, your host. While our campuses are closed and our students are at home, KHTS, in collaboration with SCBI and iLead Schools, brings you this special edition of Eye on the Valley called Homeschooling Answers. Well, we've got a very special show for you today. We've got Superintendent Mike Coleman from the William S. Hart School District who will be joining us in just a moment to update us on the progress of school distance learning and how our high school and junior high school students are doing. We'll also have an amazingly special moment with a local hero here in town. Trust me, things are gonna get a little crazy a little bit later on this morning, so if you're looking for a few laughs, maybe a few tears, buckle up and stick with us for the next hour. It's gonna be kind of wild. Now my first guest today, as I said, is the superintendent of the William S. Hart School District. Mike Coleman graduated mag magna cum laude from UCLA. That's right, he is a Bruin. He earned his teaching credential from UC Irvine and his master's degree and administrative credential from the University of Laverne. Mr. Coleman joined the Hart School District in 1997 as a history teacher at Saugus High School. He became assistant principal of Canyon High School from 2001 to 2006, during which time he also served briefly as interim principal at Rancho Pico Junior High. After Canyon and Rancho Pico, Mr. Coleman was named principal at Placerita Junior High School, serving there for six years before being named principal at Canyon High School. And just two years later, he was, a na he was named assistant superintendent of educational services at the district level. In October 2018, Mike accepted the position of deputy superintendent and just recently assumed the top position at the Hart District. Mike is the recipient of a litany of awards and accolades at every level of his career, including Teacher of the Year, Co-Administrator of the Year, Middle Grades Principal of the Year, Secondary Principal of the Year, and District Officer, Office Administrator of the Year, among others. Mr. Coleman is passionate about the social and emotional wellness of his students, staff, and family. Under his guidance, the Hart District has hired a wellness coordinator along with site wellness liaisons on each campus and has opened wellness centers at multiple sites across Santa Clarita Valley. And let me say this, during this, what is hands down the most trying year in the history of our Valley schools, Mr. Coleman's compassion and leadership have been a stalwart in and for our community. He's got a passion for fishing and lives here in Santa Clarita with his wife, Cindy, and their sons. Mr. Coleman, good morning. Welcome in, sir. Well, thank you, Matt. I really appreciate you, uh, you inviting me to be part of everything and uh, wanted to say hello to everyone, uh, to you and to Amber and the rest of the FCVI team and, and the FCVI family. It's my pleasure to be with you all here today. Well, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, as, as a parent, I want to take the time one more time to thank you personally for your incredible leadership and communication during um, these multiple events and uh, uh, difficulties that we've been working through as a school community. Now, the closure of our school sites and shift to distance learning for our schools came rather suddenly as our state and city reacted quickly to the current health crisis. So what's the current state of things at your district? How are, how are everything, how's everything going with the students and, and the teachers and, and distance learning? Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you for asking. And allow me to say just to begin with um, how much I, uh, how I am just so impressed with the work of uh, our entire valley. You know, it, one of the things I shared in the communication that I sent out just yesterday, where we unfortunately had to announce the physical closure of the school extension through the end of this school year, was um, how uh, we can all agree that, you know, this, this year, 2019, 2020, is just unprecedented. The number of just earth-shattering tragedies that we all are aware of, um, you know, one of these would be enough for one valley. Um, and, I, you know, I'm careful that I don't want to put a silver lining on, on what, you know, continues to be a, a crisis, but I am continually amazed at how people in our community step up to the plate um, time after time um, to, uh, you know, address the, the issues that are right in front of us. And so what I want to say is, you know, we're in the middle of a crisis. It's a, um, it's a challenge for which, you know, that there's no perfect answer. We've been asked to do things in an unbelievably short amount of time. And, you know, it's a little rough around the edges. But all things considered, Matt, I have to tell you that we are on the right track. Um, we still have things we need to work on, and anyone who's listening that I'm sure will have a number of things that we have to address, but we have the right people in place. 
and we are working on these things, and I'm just really proud of the work that has been done so far. I will share with you that as all of us across this state and across the nation are working on figuring out how to transition to a on, um, on-site uh, you know, instruction to, to exclusively uh, online instruction, that you know, we've, we've had a lot of districts looking at the work that we're doing, and I think they're looking at the work that SCBI is doing as well. And so I take that as a compliment, and uh, hopefully I can push that um, note of congratulations and thanks to our teaching staff and our support staff who have made the impossible possible in the last several weeks. Yeah. Uh, I, so I wanted to share with you. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry. No, I no, no, to, please. I don't want to cut you off. So I wanted to share with you that, uh, that you know, it is remarkable the, cha- the change that happened in our district. It happened in a matter of five days. Yeah. The initial school closure, as you know, was back on March 13th, Friday the 13th. Mm-hmm. The start of our distance learning program of actual instruction occurred five days later, including the weekend on March 18th. And uh, as you know, originally we, we had scheduled that for a period of several weeks. Then it was extended to May 4th. And after the governor's pronouncement just this past week, it's uh, regrettably been extended to June 4th. Um, so uh, I, I do want to share that we were uh, we were anticipating challenges associated with the coronavirus uh, several weeks prior to the closure. None of us anticipated where we're at right now. I, I mean, I, I think very few people anywhere can say that they did, but we we were anticipating it. We were paying close attention, and we had convened kind of a war room about three weeks prior to talk about all the potential issues that we need to talk about. At that time, we were talking about enhanced cleaning on our campuses. Um, And one of the things that we were able to do about two weeks prior was we directed all of our school sites to to schedule professional development training to make sure that at the very least we had a baseline understanding among every teacher for how to use Google Classroom. Uh, we, uh, most of our teachers, or many of our teachers, I'll say, are, are regularly using some form of online uh, um, instructional uh, tool, uh, and many of them are using Google Classroom, but we were able to capture all of them prior to the announcement of the closure to make sure that we had uh, some, um, you know, that everybody was prepared for that, and, and uh, that enabled us to move forward as quickly as we did. I know that some other districts, understandably, there's certainly no criticism. We're all trying to figure this out. Have had to wait a little bit longer to make that happen, but we were up and running um, as soon as uh, March 18th. Yeah, and I think that's a testament, like you said, to uh, to your proactivity as well as the proactivity of the of the community. You know, um, we see oftentimes on social media uh, families talking about how difficult this is, but we also need to remember that this is a completely new paradigm for our teachers as well, who are are struggling to get up and running and 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 get a a quality curriculum as well as that social emotional connection with their with their students a, a, as quickly as possible. So, how have you seen your staff adjusting to the new model? Are you hearing from the teaching staff, students, families? How's everybody doing? You know, I think generally I'm I'm um, I am pleasantly uh, I don't want to say pleasantly surprised, but I'm pleased at the number of positive reports that we're hearing from staff. And whenever I say that, I always want to qualify it because this has been tough on everybody. Uh, you know, it's been tough on. Uh, you know, I don't need to to reiterate what we all know. People are losing their jobs, and they've been thrust into areas that aren't what they do on a regular basis. Uh, they're having to manage their own uh, homes while the teachers actually are, you know, teaching at the same time, taking care of their kids. So there's challenges with it. But I am overwhelmed in the number of positive pieces of feedback that we have received. We ha- we have something that we we started about two weeks ago. It's called What's Good in Distance Learning, mm. where um, because we we all know that we're working through the details. We thought it's just helpful for us all to hear from one another uh, some of the positives that have come from that. And so we have. Uh, dozens of submissions from across the district of uh, teachers and support staff sharing just the good things that are happening. And, you know, one of the neat things that I heard was we we, uh, conducted a Zoom meeting with parents this past uh, week. Uh, It was our Parent Communication Council meeting. It was so good to see everybody. This is such a, a wonderful, supportive group of parents. 
and they were able to give us some honest feedback and nothing's perfect and there are some challenges we need to work through but generally they were complimentary and thankful that we have a schedule that calls for students to check in with teachers uh, uh, every uh, every day of the week. And just, if I might, I wanted to share just generally the, the, the structure of our, the, 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 very, the outline of our distance learning weekly outline is uh, two 90-minute blocks per week per subject area. And that means English, science, history, math, PE, and electives. And then we have one day for office hours, Friday 9 to 12, where uh, teachers can work directly with individual students to, to uh, work through some of the challenges with each of those. We've, we've directed to begin with that our teachers should focus in the transition on essential standards. And what we mean by that was, as we made this rapid transition, it, it's unreasonable to suggest that everyone can, can um, duplicate or replicate uh, the degree of rigor that was happening in person to this sudden online format. So we said, take a look at the things that are absolutely essential for students to know and be able to do, the essential standards. Focus on those, and we have called for instruction, assignment, and grading to be happening from the very start. Some of those things are a little challenging. We're working through some of those, but I did want to point that out because I know that other districts in other locations have not done that. They started with simply enrichment for students, mm -hmm. and based upon the guidance of the state, they are now coming back to um, the need for real instruction to happen. And I guess uh, one final note about that is that when we say school is closed through June 4th, it's important to emphasize that um, school remains in session. We are, we are in session. We are, uh, we are continuing to grow. We're working toward accomplishing our goals, graduation requirements, et cetera. It's just in a new format. Yeah, absolutely, and, and glad to hear that, that things are going so well. Now, um, we were talking about it a little bit before the show started. My son's a senior this year, and I know he's not the only one. There's several thousand high school seniors out there uh, in our community. and. My son, for one, is getting a little bit stressed about things like prom and, and graduation, and, and I'm sure that's weighed yeah. heavy on your mind as well as your staff. So do you know yet, do you have any idea how those landmark events are gonna be handled? Well, uh, we don't have any definitive answers on it, but I do have some statements that'll help clarify to folks. A couple things, one is, I want to acknowledge that um, this is a, the, the, the things that have happened this second semester are especially painful for our seniors. We understand the significance of the, 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 the life milestones that occur in the second semester of your senior year. And uh, that's something that, that from teachers to administrators to district officials, all of us have had a number of meetings thinking about how can we preserve some of the opportunities to honor our seniors and give them the experience that they had come to expect. So while I don't have any specifics on it, what I can share with you is that we are actively planning for alternatives right now. And we are open to the idea of the potential for a delay in some of these things and that they could occur at a later time in an, another place. Okay. And so I just wanted to share with you that uh, we're open to that. I think if all of us feel like whatever we can do to, to make it work for, you know, for the kids, the, the, the asterisk that I want to place on that statement is we need to face the fact that this is a serious crisis. Right. It is a health crisis that does involve life and death issues. Correct. And so any change that we come to will need for us to be able to work with our health, you know, county health officials to ensure that we can do so in a safe fashion. That's the challenge. And so I wanted everyone to know that we are open to it, we're working on it, but it's all going to be contingent upon whether we can do so in a way that keeps students and families and our community safe. Absolutely, and I, I appreciate that you've always put that first and foremost, so thank you for that update. Mr. Coleman, it's always yeah. a pleasure to talk to you, and, and once again, thank you so much for your leadership and care. We do have to take a short commercial break, but you will definitely want to stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to be hitting hard with the feels. I'll be joined by a co-host who is making his radio debut, and together we have a touching presentation to make to someone who has been a, a pillar in the Santa Clarita community for 40 years. You're listening to SCVI Charter Schools 
Schools Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. I'm your host, Matt Watson, on your hometown station, KHTS. At iLead Agua Dulce, we believe the most important thing a child can learn in school is who they are. Life's real tests are never standardized, which is why we've developed an individual-based curriculum that values exploration, cooperation, and creativity. As our learners grow, so do we. Our tuition-free charter school is currently enrolling grades TK through 7th and adding 8th grade in 2020. Your young learner will be immersed in a unique environment where possibility and self-discovery are at the core of every experience. The Agua Dulce campus features beautiful indoor and outdoor spaces for hands-on inspiration, including a robotics lab, a garden bed, a greenhouse, and a technology-based exploratorium. Islay Agua Dulce is conveniently located on the east side of the Santa Clarita Valley, just off the 14 freeway. Check out our homeschool options too. To schedule a campus tour or learn more about our programs, visit iLeadAguadulce.org. We're enrolling now. iLead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. During this unprecedented time, Duncan has continually focused on the health and safety of their employees and, of course, you, the customer. Duncan's committed to being there for you, serving in the safest way possible, following all national, state, and local guidelines. Here in Santa Clarita, Duncan has implemented carryout and drive through services, in addition to curbside pickup. The Duncan in Canyon Country is open from 5 a.m. until 7 p.m., serving guests with carryout and drive through services. The Duncan on Bouquet Canyon near Lowe's is open from 5 a.m. until 7 p.m p.m. with carryout and curbside pickup. Download the Duncan app to pay, order, and accumulate points. Duncan is now also available through Grubhub for home and office delivery. Did you know you can attend College of the Canyons tuition free? Yeah. Canyons Promise provides incoming first-time college students the opportunity to attend College of the Canyons tuition free for their first two years. And you don't even have to be a recent high school graduate to take advantage of the opportunity. Anyone who's a first-time college student and meets the Canyons Promise criteria can sign up. Visit canyons.edu slash promise for full details and to get signed up before June 15th. Canyons.edu slash promise. Okay, who wants clean air in your home? Vote for clean air. Hey, Ned, what are you doing? Running for office? No, but with Pacific Air's new air scrubbers, people can finally have clean air in their home. We'll save their lungs, save their health, and maybe... Don't say it, Ned. Help Grandma breathe easier. Aw, I gotta call my grandma. Sometimes I think Ned is too enthusiastic. But we'd all like to breathe cleaner air. Mark Schneider and daughter Kaylee for Pacific Air. With all the talk lately about staying safe and breathing cleaner air. Pacific Air's special air scrubbers can clean your home's air so you can worry less and breathe easier. And with easy financing, we can install air scrubbers in your heating and air system in just one day. We think you'll say, Wow! That was refreshing. When you want the best, call Pacific Air. Get new air scrubbers for your home today from Pacific Air. Go to packair.com for details. That's P-A-C-A-I-R-E.com. Remember, without the E, it's just air. Why do people from all over Santa Clarita come to our spa in Canyon Country? Simple. They want the highest quality services at prices that everyone can afford. This is Rosemary from Beyond Harmony Med Spa. Read our reviews and know why we won the Ultimate Beauty Awards two years in a row by the readers of Elite Magazine. Come and see how close we really are and experience the level of excellence that our clients have loved for the past 13 years. Go to beyondharmony.com or call 298-8008 today for a free consultation. This is your moment. Your perception has everything to do how this year is going to work. Many times your past experiences will dictate how you will fight your internal battles. It is not what others perceive about me, it's what I perceive about myself that matters. Remember, you will not be defeated by what others say about you. You will be defeated by what you say about you. This is the year of your remodeling, removing, and rebuilding your best self. For more information regarding service times, visit iElevateChurch.com. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Go ahead. Do it. And we're back! 
That's right. He's always wanted to do that. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 on the FM dial and 1220 AM. I am Matt Watson, joined now by my co-host, Tony Watson. And this is SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. Yes, yes, he's my brother, and he's playing a big part in what we're about to do. Say hello, Tony. Good morning, everybody. That's enough. This is my show. We've got something very special for the rest of the show. We are about to surprise someone. Uh, we're about to surprise someone very special in the community on what is a very, a very special day. Are you ready for it? Um, we are uh, actually going to be uh, calling someone and uh, and surprising them on the air. I've got my board operator Patty working on this surprise for us right now. And uh, we are just about ready with our, our next guest. I think she's there. One moment, please. Um, so this is a, a very special moment for someone in our community, someone who's been, a, like I said before, a pillar in our community the last 40 years. Hello, are you on? I am on. Okay, great. Before we go much further, this is Matt and Tony Watson, and you're on Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. Can we get your permission to put your voice on the air? Yes, you can, but just for a minute, because I have a 9.30 appointment. That 9.30 appointment's going to have to wait. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest was born and raised in the San Fernando Valley. She grew up in Northridge, the second of five children, the daughter of two bankers. A standout, school, a standout in school, academically and socially, Elizabeth Hopp, Back then, she was known as Buffy Mapes. She graduated from Cleveland High School and soon married the star of the baseball team. Children were soon on their way, and not long after that, she started her own career in banking in 1969. Still known as Buffy, she began to climb the ladder in the profession dominated by men and in a time when women were still struggling to find a spot in the executive boardroom. By 1980, she and her husband, Steve, had relocated their family to Santa Clarita, and Buffy soon began to be known by her given name, Elizabeth, named after her aunt. She not only fell in love with this community, but she fell in love with community banking, moving to Santa Clarita National Bank. But then in 2004, Elizabeth was recruited by a group seeking to open a bank, a new bank in Santa Clarita, as their chief banking officer. This new bank, Bank of Santa Clarita, would usher in a new style of community banking, personally catering to the needs of small to medium-sized businesses, professionals, entrepreneurs, and high net worth clients. Ever seeking to give back to the community that she adores, Elizabeth can always be found at local community events, fundraisers, coordinating, and laughing away with her many friends. Elizabeth has been active in the community uh, leadership, serving on the boards of the Michael Hofflin Foundation, Henry Mayo Newhall Memorial Hospital, the Santa Clarita Boys and Girls Club, and the Santa Clarita Valley Senior Center, where she currently serves as president of the board of directors. She's received numerous commendations and awards for her service, including Santa Clarita Valley's Woman of the Year 2013. And today, ladies and gentlemen, today, she retires from a banking career of over 50 years. Frank, there had better be a gold watch in your pocket right now. Elizabeth Hopp, Mom, welcome in. Good morning, Mother. Thank you. This is so nice to talk to both of you. I miss you. We miss you, too. We've been socially distanced for a couple weeks now, and it's it's been a little tough on our family. We are very tight-knit. But we got to jump right into it, Mom. We're on a schedule. I wanted to ask okay. you, what made you choose a career in banking? Um, all the different careers you could have gone in, because like I said, you were a stellar student. What made you choose banking? Well, at the time, banking was one of the few careers that, first of all, that I could get hired as a woman, second of all, that I could have weekends and nights off to take care of my children. Wonderful. Elizabeth, during your 50-year banking career, you worked for some larger banks, Bank of America, City National, to name a few, and some smaller banks, some community banks, if you will, Santa Clarita National Bank back in the 80s, and now Bank of Santa Clarita. Can you share a little bit of the difference between bigger banks and community banks, some of the pros and cons of each, and maybe what you liked or disliked? So big banks versus community banks. Well, big banks have more infrastructure. There's more departments to help. For instance, when I first went to work for Santa Clarita National Bank, I was making auto loans, and they had a very high delinquency rate. And if I repossessed a car, I had to hire the repo guy, have him bring the car to the bank, and put an ad in the paper, sell it myself. I wonder bank if of America I could do that for you now. That'd be cool. That's, well, we don't make those loans anymore. Oh, <laughs> 
your banks, you call the repo department, say, here's the car, here's the customer's name, I'll send you the file, and that's it. It's out of your hands. Um, the biggest difference for me, though, is smaller banks, you can take care of your clients. <clears throat> you can tell them the reason that you can't do something if you can't do something. And if you don't know the reason, someone else will tell you within the bank. Well, In a big bank, I don't know why we can't do that, and I don't know who to call to tell me why. There's, um, there's countless people in this valley that I've spoken to, Mother, that, that talk about Elizabeth Hopp is the one that trusted her. Elizabeth Hopp is the one that helped get their business started, and so you just made such an amazing difference in this community. So when well, you start, what, I apologize for stepping on you like that, Mom. I've been doing it all my life. I know. <laughs> um, it's, it's much easier when you know your customers and your boss knows you and knows that he can trust you. So that's what the difference is in a small bank. I really do prefer small banks. So when you started your career in the late 60s, there were limited choices for women in business. Have you seen that change? And, and what was it like actually being part of leading that change for women? Oh, absolutely, I've seen it change. Back in the late 60s, early 70s, um, just to give you an example, we were not allowed to wear pants to work. We had to wear um, business suits with a skirt. Um, there were very few female doctors, attorneys, professionals at all. And now it's not unusual at all to have um, a banking relationship with a group of female dentists, uh, a female attorney practice, a female CPA, and it's very refreshing. It's it's a nicer way to do business, I think. It's interesting that you mention that because Tony's not wearing pants in the studio today. Hey. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew, I know it's right. Hey, I got a face for radio. So, um, Elizabeth, you have granddaughters, and you've also mentored so many women over your career. And in this post-Me Too movement and Title IX era, what would you say to young aspiring business women? How would, you, how would you guide them? How would you coach them? Or in essence, what advice would you have for some of our young lady listeners? I would say that the sky is the limit for you. And I hear a lot about find your passion, get the job you want right out of college. And I don't know that that's the truth. Sometimes you have to settle, if you will, for a job that is not exactly what you want. But within that job, you find facets that you really like, things that you don't like, and it kind of helps you figure out what you want to do eventually. Don't expect to find your passion and your lifelong career when you're 23. It may take until you're 33, maybe even older. So I know that you, uh, you have worked extremely hard and, and you are to be congratulated for everything that you've accomplished, but you didn't necessarily make it to where you're at on your own. You had some mentors along the way. Who were maybe a couple of your most memorable mentors and why? Oh, gosh. Um, my mother was a great mentor. Mm. She always told me that I could do anything that I wanted to do, and she worked practically the whole time I was growing up. And I thought it was out of necessity, but I found out from her younger sister that she really enjoyed working. And I think she passed that along to me. My older sister was certainly a mentor. Um, she's been a nurse practitioner and still at age 72 working as a hospice nurse. So um, I've had a lot of very strong women in my family that I've always looked up to. Uh, I had a couple women that I worked for back in the old Bank of America days that were very inspirational to me too. So you, you mentioned grandma or your mother, but some, some of our listeners may not know, Mom, that both your mother and your father both were career bankers as well, <clears throat> having worked at both having worked at Bank of America. Looking back at your career, if you could talk to them today, what would you tell them about your career, your retirement, and how everything shook out? And and I know you'll be humble, and of course they saw most of your career. But if we were sitting around that kitchen table back on Texoma, how would the conversation go today? Well, first of all, unfortunately, my dad didn't see that much of my career as he passed away in 1985. 
Um, and he was a huge mentor to me. I would call him when I got home from work, and I was working as a teller at Bank of America. He was a branch manager, and I would talk over my problems with him, and he would give advice. Um, so I think he would be extremely proud of what's happened today, and I would tell him how the career that he pretty much picked for me um, has worked out beautifully for me, and I've made lifelong friends both as customers, both with customers and employees, co-workers, that I never would have had in another, another life. So, um, and my mom, um, she, she and I had very, very similar career paths. Although for her, hers stopped at being an executive secretary because that's what women did in those days. And she retired in 1990. Um, and that she was still extremely well thought of at Bank of America in Beverly Hills. And she began doing volunteer work at the hospital. And I think she'd be as proud of my work on the board at the hospital and on the patient care committee as she is of my banking career. Absolutely. I'm sure she would be. So, um, it's all coming to an end today. What happens tomorrow? What are your plans for retirement, Mom? Um, I'm going to sleep in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, I, I'm, <clears throat> there could be a day pretty soon where I actually go without makeup. Whoa. Ooh. Talk about scary. Ooh, yeah. yeah. We're going to have to keep our social distance. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I know... We had had a couple trips planned, but those are kind of by the wayside now, so who knows what it'll bring. They, they are for a little while, but I know that, uh, that you and your husband Steve travel um, quite extensively. You, you've been all over Europe. You've been to, to Latin America. I know you love traveling around. Um, looking beyond our, our current quarantine situations, have you guys got any uh, travel plans coming up maybe a year from now, two years from now? Well, we have a cruise booked for the end of this year, but um, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and that was the last thing that we had planned, and we're kind of worried about planning anything else. We don't want to jinx anything. Well, so. what, about, what about some of those family vacations that uh, you've enjoyed with your children and grandkids so much? Are you still planning on taking those family vacations? Because we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> we actually... We have a house booked in Tahoe for the family in July, but I don't know. We could still probably go, but if Tahoe's closed, I don't know that there's much point. So, right, right. But yes, we will be certainly taking family vacations and doing family barbecues and all that sort of thing. And I would love to spend more time with the grandkids and the daughter-in-law and the sons, too, now that I have the time. So. Well, that trip to Lake Tahoe was our Christmas present, so you're going to have some splaining to do if Lake Tahoe gets closed. That's true. We are honoring area philanthropist and banking legend Elizabeth Hopp. We need to take a quick commercial break, but Mom, you stay right there. You cancel that meeting. Uh, if you think this is emotional, you just wait till we get back. We're listening to SCBI. Well, you're listening to meeting. SCBI Charter Schools. No, no meeting. No meeting, Mom. It's to sign my paperwork so I can get out of here. We, okay. can, we can wait on that. You can hold off for 10 minutes. Right. Yeah, definitely. You are listening to SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson with my co-host and childhood bully, Tony Watson. And Elizabeth Hopp will be back with us next break here on your hometown station, KHTS. The city of Santa Clarita is working closely with the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health to monitor the coronavirus COVID-19. On March 13th, the city of Santa Clarita issued a local emergency declaration in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Due to the stay-at-home order, the Santa Clarita events like Thursdays at Newhall and the Cowboy Festival have been put on hold for the safety of the community. For information, go to santa-clarita.com. For important updates, visit the emergency blog at Santa Clarita Emergency. This is Bob Sheritz with The Way Out Recovery SCV, giving you tips on how to stay sane and sober through the coronavirus pandemic. Start your day with an attitude of gratitude. If you're having trouble doing this, stopping everything you're doing and writing down a gratitude list can get you in a place to remind you that everything is gonna be okay and there are many things in your life to be grateful for. If you or someone you love is struggling with substance abuse or mental health, please give us a call at 
4444. And remember, this too shall pass and we're all going to be okay. Thanks. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town Newhall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go online to canyontheater.org. You see so much when you look at your child. A creative spirit that surprises you every day. Curiosity that develops into exploring unique passions. A little leader growing every day to discover who they are, what they love, and how they can make their mark on the world. At SCVI, we see those same amazing things. Our tuition-free K-12 charter school gives your child boundless opportunities to think critically and imagine freely with a customized learning program built around each individual student. As iLead's founding school, SCVI combines an immersive approach to traditional subject learning with extracurricular activities, including STEAM, robotics, theater, music, and sports. SCVI has the only international baccalaureate program in Santa Clarita, with a 10-year proven track record of graduates excelling at top universities. And we're in your backyard, just off the 5 freeway in West Santa Clarita Valley in Castaic. For enrollment information or to learn more about our program, including homeschool options, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. iLead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. Hi, this is Pastor Rusty from Real Life Church with a minute of encouragement. Remember that game we used to play on the playground where we'd hit the ball around the pole? We called it tether ball. Everything worked great until somebody hit the ball so hard it just unhinged from the rope. Doesn't it feel like our culture and even our world is in that right now? With coronavirus making us wonder about our economy, our work, even our personal freedom, it just feels like we have nothing to put our faith in anymore. That's why I love the words of Jesus who says, whoever puts their trust in me is like a man who builds his house on the rock. When the storms come, the winds will not destroy him. Friends, if you're wondering right now how we're going to do this, we're going to do this the way that we do anything, and that is we're going to get through this together. Put your hope in the rock. If you would like prayer, text the word prayer to 661-270-7788. Dutton Plumbing, it's Eric. Son, it's Mother. I was thinking, son. Wait a minute. Cut, son. I'm coming into your sound booth. Mom, what are you doing? I don't think we need a commercial. I want to let everyone know that we're open for all the usual services, but that we also care about what's going on. You know, you're right. There's doctors and nurses out there I want to thank, along with the police and the firemen. And as a mother, I want to remind parents to teach their kids to wash their hands more often and use plenty of soap. Even our plumbers are using extra safety devices like gloves, booties, and use disinfectant on all the surfaces they touch. And, you know, that's a good idea for anyone interacting with the public right now. I just want us all to stay safe and healthy. And that they can call us for anything they need right now. <laughs> That's why I love you, Mom. You think about our customers first. Give me a hug. Son, social distancing. Your hometown station, KHTS. tell you how much of a treat for him that is. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson with my best, best friend, my constant co-pilot, my man, my ace, Tony Watson. And you're listening to Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. Today, we're paying tribute to local banking leader, lifelong philanthropist, and Sunday morning pop tunes dancing queen, Elizabeth Hopp. Mom, thank you so much for your patience. Over the past, well, 53 years, well, the good news is Tony and I are pretty much done. The bad news is it's about to get really ugly. There are a few uh -oh. people that, uh, that want to talk to you really quickly, um, some folks that uh, wanted to send their congratulations out to you today on your last day of work, okay? So uh, okay. here they come. Pay close attention. 
Hey, Grandma. Thank you. This is Becca. I just wanted to say that I love you so much, and I'm so incredibly proud of you. Hey, Elizabeth. Oh. It's Brenda. Just wanted to let you know that it's been an honor and a pleasure working with you for the last 15 and a half years and knowing you for much longer. I wish you the best for your retirement, and when all this crazy mess is over, hopefully you can do all the things you set out to do. Take care, and all of our love from Mike and I. It's Carl Goldman. And Jerry Serretti Goldman. We've known Elizabeth for way too many decades. Elizabeth, you've been a jewel of our valley and a fixture at the bank and so many nonprofit boards. I suspect you'll be asked to join a few more boards now that you have some free time. Congratulations on your retirement. We, we love, love you. you. Hey, Buffy, this is Sherry and Don Fleming wishing you a wonderful, happy retirement. But just remember, friendship lasts forever. We love you. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Hi, Mom. It's Erica, your lifesaver. Just kidding. Just wanted to say congratulations on a very successful career. We are very proud of you, and we are looking forward to spending much more time together. Have a blessed day. Congratulations, Elizabeth, on pulling the trigger on retirement. This is Frank Tomaso, and I want to thank you for joining the Bank of Santa Clarita 16 years ago and helping build such a great organization. You'll be sorely missed. Enjoy. Hi, this is Fred and Penny Moran in Oregon. Congratulations on your retirement. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Best wishes from both of us. Bye. Hi, Elizabeth. Fred, I want to say congratulations on your retirement. We're going to miss you. Remember when we met in that bungalow right by the Do It Center? And we've become great friends. It's so excited for your retirement. Also so excited to enjoy wine with you and, and Steve and, and really uh, continue to build our relationship. Congratulations and thanks for all you've done. Jane Raleigh here. So now that you, the most beloved banker in Santa Clarita, are retiring, you can finally return to that clogging that we learned to do 20 years ago. Jim Backer, JSP Development. Elizabeth, our community has benefited greatly from your contributions. You are an old-fashioned relationship banker and most importantly, a friend. Godspeed. Hey, Elizabeth, this is Julie and Steve. Congratulations on your retirement. You're a model leader in our community and proud to be your co-winner of Man and Woman of the Year 2013. Looking forward to more senior center board meetings, dinners, wine, and of course our foodless Indian dinners and friendship. Hi Elizabeth, it's Kevin from the SCB Senior Center. I want to congratulate you on your retirement and wish you the best of luck. I'm reporting from Bella Vida, which means beautiful life, and you've had a beautiful life. You'll continue to have a beautiful life on behalf of all of us and all of our seniors. Thank you for your support and your encouragement through the years, and best of luck. Hi, Elizabeth. The Hacker family is sending you congratulations for a very well-deserved retirement. We love you. Hi, Elizabeth. Lena McFerrin here. Rob and I want to wish you all of the best in your retirement. We will miss seeing you at the bank. Congratulations on your retirement, Elizabeth, with love from Linda and Mo. Happy retirement. This is Marley Lawfer. You deserve it. You've been a great friend of the hospital, a great friend of so many nonprofits, and you're my great friend. I look forward to spending more time with you. Hi, Elizabeth. This is Nellie. And Gary. Best wishes for a great retirement life. We love you. Hey, Grandma. This is Pars. I just wanted to thank you so much for being so supportive of me and always being there for me. And I can't wait to go out and get lunch with you more often and so our bond can go, grow even stronger. Hey Elizabeth, it's Paul and Gaina Butler here. We just wanted to say congratulations and again, thanks for everything you did for us from day number one in the business. Hi Liz, this is from Mitzi, Don, Randy and Todd from LBW. We've really loved working with you at the bank for these many years and now look forward to seeing you around the neighborhood. Have fun in retirement. Bye-bye. Elizabeth, this is Michelle and Richard Golding. We'd like to wish you a very happy and well-deserved retirement. And now you'll have time to get back to reading tea leaves. Elizabeth, is it true you're actually going to retire? Uh, some of us aren't smart enough to know when to do that, but I'm happy for you and I'm happy for Steve. Thanks for all the great stuff you've done for Henry Mayo. Have a good time. Hi, Grandma. It's your grandkids, Scott and Hannah. We just wanted to say congratulations on your retirement. We're so proud of you. I can't wait to go on more trips and travel with you in the future. Congrats, Grandma. I can't wait to bake more cookies with you. 
We love you. Hi, Elizabeth. This is Tom and Patty. We just want to congratulate you on an outstanding career. And we love you, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Hi, Buzz. This is Rudy. Congratulations on a truly remarkable and wonderful career. Love you. A message to a wonderful mother, a perfect grandmother, and a banker's banker. Enjoy your retirement to the fullest. We highly recommend it. With love. Mike and Susie Watson. Yeah, you've got a lot of people out there who love and respect and admire you. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Now, there are, we've only got a couple more minutes, but there are a few more people that wanted to congratulate you, and, and they are all here on the line with us. I believe we are ready to go, so hold tight for this. Are, are we ready to go, Patty? This is going to get slippery. All right. So first up, is, first, first up is your youngest brother, Ed Mapes. Ed, are you there? Hey, Ed. Marley. Oh, I'm sorry. This this must be Marley. Marley, are you there? I'm not. I'm not the younger brother, but I am okay. Elizabeth's friend, Marley. Your friend, colleague on many boards, many committees, and many bottles of wine. Hello, Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell all of our secrets. Okay. Really, thank you for calling in. You no, have no idea how much I value our friendship. Thank you. Oh, me too. And Elizabeth, I gotta say, it's it's an end of an era, both for you as a banker, but I know it's not an end of all your community support. You've just been amazing with, with everything you've done for the community, from Senior Center and Child and Family and Boys and Girls Club, and then, of course, for, you know, from my heart, uh, at the hospital um, as chair of our board and on our patient care committee, and I know that's not going to stop. I think no, we do have not. Ed on the phone right now. Ed, are you there? I am. Thank you. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. Welcome to my party. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, Matt, do you want me to go? Please, please. Yeah, this and I, I don't have a lot of time, but you know how much I love you, how proud I am of you, and all the things that people know. You're generous. You're a great host. Lots of friends. Love your family. few things that people don't know. That's why I'm here, though, Buff. <laughs> that you were. And I think, that's, one, <laughs> I think that's where we need to cut them off, don't we, Mom? I, no, no, no. <laughs> At one time, part of the notorious Tattletail Shoe Clan. <laughs> oh, that yes. Number two, that you had, an, in, as many did, you had a, a perm in the 1980s, although I, I think your, <laughs> you did. I think yours was voted the biggest perm in the Santa Clarita Valley that year. Probably. Ed, we do need to cut. I want to go to Aunt Lori. We've only got a couple minutes left. Lori from okay. Colorado. And you're, a great drive, and you're a great driver, Buff. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know how to parallel park. All right. <laughs> Aunt hey, Lori. Lori. How, Lori? About, how about Jane? Jane, are you there? Hello, is, is Jane or Lori there? I thought they were both on the line. Your sisters, Lori from Littleton, Colorado, and, uh, and Jane from North Carolina were, were calling in, but I don't think we have them on the air right now. Well, I'll talk to them later. That's okay. Okay, absolutely. They both did want to express their, their extreme love. Well, um, I think we do need to go in, in just a minute, but we just wanted to let you know, Mom, how incredibly proud we are. Uh, uh, of all that you've accomplished and everything that you've worked so hard to become. We, we love you so much. You're an inspiration and an incredible woman. We, we love you. And a great sister and a great family member and somebody who I value very, very much as a sibling. Well, thank you. And thank you, Matt and Tony, for putting this all together. Our I pleasure. love you all. It's our pleasure. And I also want to thank our guest, Superintendent Mike Coleman. Mom, did you know you shared the show today with our new superintendent? No. Hi, Mike. <laughs> and thank you, Mom. Elizabeth Hopp and her tribe, Jane Solomon and Aunt Lori. I'm, I'm sorry I, I, we weren't able to get to you guys. Um, Ed Mapes and Marley Loffer, thank you for calling in. I also wanted to say a very special thank you to all of those who made this possible. The whole team here at KHTS, Jerry and Carl, Andrew, Patty, our, our board op, and everyone else, Amber SCB and SCBI, my co-host, Big T, and and uh, all of you who sent in your messages and your love and thank you all so much for joining us and indulging us this morning join us again monday morning and every monday through friday at 9 a.m for more educational updates and homeschooling support you're listening to your hometown station khts